There's a story inside every smoke shop, with every cigar, and with every person. Come be a part of the cigar lifestyle at Bovida. This is Box Press. Ramon Mansour, Cigar Brothers. Uh, it was fun uh, yesterday walking at the other end of the pavilion, seeing this massive display of Cigar Brothers and seeing you with your team and thinking about the experience. How many years ago at TP would it have been? It would have been... Yeah, I think uh, it's been four years, about four so years. So before the pandemic yeah. and yep, all that. Yep, yep. And you yep. had an idea. That's right. Yep. I remember I walked up. Um, of course, we, we, we've distributed Bovida for a long time. And I saw you at the booth looking at Bovida. And I went and introduced myself to you. And uh, had a conversation. And, and I shared my idea. Well, and you had diagrams and you had schematics of what your idea was. And you said, uh, I, th I think uh, specifically it was, I want to create a self-contained humidor that self-contained humidor that can be placed in non-traditional uh, locations yep. to distribute cigars. That's right. And I want Bovida to be involved. We want to have the preservation aspect of it yep. handled for the consumer. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of ideas. And uh, I don't know, there was just something about your earnestness and your... Uh, yeah, I, I told Jay about it, and, and then you started dealing with Jay, and I don't, I, I don't know that it happened instantly, but you, you went from that concept to rolling out a, a beta test, at least, in relatively short period of time. I mean, you had to order things and deal with all the details, but I think within two, a couple of years, you had started this... Cigar Brothers. Yep. Yep. It wasn't called Cigar Brothers back then. Well, remember, we, so me and my brothers own a, a, cash a, few, and carry. a few cash carries in San Diego. And uh, I think when I met you, I don't even think we had a name for it yet. I want to say it was early, maybe it was uh, February 2019, I want to say. And it, we had just received our first prototype. And we're still in the testing, in the testing phase. And uh, remember, we, we, we had a humidor program in San Diego since 2004, local one. And I've always been intrigued with kind of uh, the challenge of getting cigars placed in, in just non-traditional places. And when you see, uh, uh, you know, the churn in those places, it's, it's rewarding for a guy like me. I'm, I've been, me and my brothers, we launched you know, a ton of stuff with, with uh, every category, you know, beverage, candy, snacks. And um, the, the birth of this idea was as, as we, we were expanding our cigar selection at our cash and carry and taking a look at our current humidor program locally, I said, man, it's, it's, uh, it hasn't changed since 2004 to 2019. It didn't evolve. So the, the idea came to me in 2018 where I said, you got to have uh, more, vari more variety, and, but it's got to be fresh, and there has to be no question. But how do you do that? Like, how do, where, where do you start? Um, that, but that's all I knew, that if, if someone's going to carry cigars, or actually if someone's going to buy cigars and be happy about it, there has to be enough selection to choose from the best brands and then it has to be the the, the the freshness cannot be a question you just got to know that it's fresh and so that's when i got to work and uh, and the birth really in 2018 was was an acrylic version vertical standing and uh we did a prototype and all this but just personally 
I, I didn't pull the trigger on that uh, because I just I I wasn't comfortable with the idea that someone is gonna be happy to constantly buy from an acrylic humidor. That has got to be the freshness can't be a question. You just got to know that it's fresh. So I figured there's got to be these self-contained, climate-controlled units. Um, and, and so we went out and sourced one. I actually flew out uh, to China. This is the factory that the best one we can find that was willing to uh, modify it to be more commercial grade, do the vertical, pull out drawers, and everything that's made geared for commercial use. And then got my prototype, and then that's what I, I showed you in, in 2019. And uh, no intention really of going outside of San Diego with it. Right. But just wanted to see if we can change uh, how and where cigars are being sold. Like how far can we push it? And uh, man, you were so gracious. Like, you know, when you, uh, as an entrepreneur, it's, it's, it's tough. It's very lonely. It's a, it's a tough journey when you had got an idea and you were trying to go after it. And you guys were just told you about it and I said hey I think there's a, a place for us where um, you know Bovida and Freshness is hand in hand and that's what we're trying to provide and uh, and so the teamwork was was awesome and we really really appreciate it from from day one well and it's intriguing because where my mind went in listening to your vision was this is really cool to have the opportunity to stand up a self-contained humidor in a liquor store, in a convenience store, in uh, at a golf course, I mean, depending on the, the market. Uh, but I thought about how many places I've seen displays of cigars where, or even if I'm wandering around Las Vegas, if I see somebody selling cigars, today there's more properly humidified storage facilities for cigars in the casinos in Las Vegas than there used to be. But you used to buy a 15, 20, 30 dollar stick from somebody walking around a vendor in the casino and you'd light it and you'd go, this is awful mm -hmm. because it's not protected. This is just, yeah. this is just terrible. So, and I think of those different liquor stores that have a limited selection behind the counter because it's an impulse buy for somebody that's coming in on a Friday night. You know, it, it's just not intentional. It's not, it's just not right. Yeah. So now you have, I, I mean, congratulations. I mean, looking at these beautiful displays, substantial. I mean, the investment that you've made in the vehicle that you're delivering this service and you're selling a service mm -hmm. you are the source for these cigars and you're giving people literally giving people the vessel that they're going to use to and it has to be durable and it has to it can't just be there for it's not just a self-liquidating display that's going to be thrown out and mm -hmm. 30 days or right. whatever so what an adventure yeah from the beginning and even till now my my focus has always been on kind of the the the, the early stages in someone's relationship with cigars I, I remember my own personal uh, experience my first time smoking a cigar was at the gas lamp district in uh downtown san diego it's and it was at a cigar lounge and I'm a college student and um, and I, you know I, I was always intrigued with cigars never had one walked into a a, a lounge walked into their their walk-in humidor and I purchased a uh, an acid Cuba Cuba and just common for a lot of college students for their first cigar experience exactly, exactly yeah. right and and with the guys and I just remember enjoying it so much. And that's it. I, ever since then, it's that feeling. I'm like, and, and that's kind of the feeling I get when I, when I enjoy it. It just takes me back to that every time. And um, so in the flip side, 
We know this if someone has a bad experience their first time. It's game over. You're so turned off. You know, I've heard it a million times. Yeah, I've I tried to say green. I, I got yeah. sick. I didn't like yeah. it. I never want to do that again. Exactly. And so I think that's a combination of uh, the wrong stick for or, or, or the wrong freshness. So you got to have the right cigar and it's got to be fresh. And then it's all about your atmosphere and your know, environment. But it's when, when it's done right, that first experience is magical. And, and, and you ask any cigar, they always remember their first cigar. They, they always remember that first experience, what it felt like. So that's, my, that's what I chase. That's kind of what was the birth of this and what fuels us to continue to always think about those early stages. I, my customers, we've learned, um, is, is not necessarily the seasoned cigar guy. So now that we, we, we're, we've expanded to 25 states, we, we're, we're primarily in the liquor store, gas station, convenience store, uh, hotels, golf courses. A lot of the guys, it's, it's on the go, or it's the guy that never really thought about cigars, never even considered going into a cigar lounge, and picking up his bottle of Jack Daniels and say, you know, let me try a cigar. And so we, we on purpose, made it approachable, displayed in a way where they can choose the right cigar. So likely, we recommend, if you're new, try, try a mild, mild to medium. A lot of ours, we do our own tubing, so you can see, they can see what they're buying rather than uh, blind to, you know, just guessing their way. So from the rating and the brand and the flavor notes, they, they could make their best educated guess. And then the beauty is if they, if they made a good choice, they, the reward, like no one guided them, they guided themselves, they took it home, they enjoyed it. And that feeling um, I, I, I experienced it as well in wine. Sure. Go to Costco and, I, and no one's there to help you. But you you, you kind of make your best guess based on region and based on maybe some ratings and things like that. And, but when you, when you take one home and you enjoy it, it's a, it's a rewarding feeling, right? And, in, and that's kind of the, the beginning relationship with, with that category. So you say, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you're, 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 you're a Dominican guy, maybe you're a Nicaraguan, maybe you're, you're like these shades versus others or sizes. And so, and that's the birth, that's kind of the start. And, 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 and that's where my mind is constantly at. My mind is constantly at, 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 at what's happening there, who's that guy, what is he picking up, and uh, what can we learn from, from that and so that we can continue to kind of guide people um, and, and build their relationship. When I had this idea, I took it to, you know, the guys at Altidus. I took it to the guys at General, the guys at Oliva, the guys at Rocky, the guys at Gurkha. They were all open to ideas and welcoming for, for a young guy, you know? And, and they, they, they were all there with me and, 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 and with this concept. And so, um, it's, it's crazy how, how far we've come. But but it couldn't have been done without you know with the support. So of you how guys. old were you when that we had that encounter? Yeah. So let's say it was four years ago. Uh, I was about 36, 35, 36. So I mean, I'm just so excited to walk over and look at your display and see this map of the territories that you've been able to serve. Mm -hmm in the way this has grown for you is it exceeding your expectations of what you thought at the outset because yeah. you were thinking southern california yep. local for because that's where your cash and carry serves do you, did you carry all these cigars in the cash and carry in the first place yeah yeah, yeah. so, so we had, had the relationships we knew yeah. we knew the brands that's significant carried, but um you know and and when i approached them with this concept i said this is going to non-traditional retailers and and we bounced around ideas a lot too of what should we place how should we place it and uh, um, we I did not expect the growth like this by any means uh, and it's it's crazy every territory we've gone in 
we've learned that you know after about a, a year it just starts you know this retailer's brother or cousin or friend when they see it and it's it's almost like a referral program yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly right. so so the intriguing thing to me is uh, I would suspect you had a little bit of pushback possibly from a few people saying oh you're gonna steal business from brick-and-mortar retail we can't do this because blah 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 but really you're not if anything you're indoctrinating people to an experience that's going to perhaps cause them to go to a brick and mortar exactly. retailer yeah and that's okay too because you're serving those retailers that's a part of your service area at least in southern california yep. where you're based but now you've gone national i mean you've gone how far have you gone i mean i didn't study the map i mean it's grown significantly i don't know to what extent but yeah. How many? So la last year, when we were here at PCA, we were licensed in five states. Distributing, we just started distributing five states in, last in the year. West Coast. And then, based on just interest from retailers, we would open up distributor distribution licenses in, in, in more states and continue to add. Right now, we're licensed in 25. We have humidors in 25 states, and uh, I think we have eight states pending. Just waiting for it for this year. It's massive just, growth. Yeah, I'm unreal. Yeah, How blessed. fun! Yeah, thank God. It's been it's been. How'd the brothers take it? That was your pet idea, right? And I can I can imagine in a family working with. I used to work with my brothers, and there's all. I mean, no one's harder on you than your brothers mm -hmm. with your ideas. I mean, and all, nobody's going to go to battle with you either and help you like a brother. So how did they take it? You know, since the beginning. Fully supportive, man. And uh, we, we have this relationship where, you know, I can always go to my brothers, and we and 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 I and I can discuss ideas, and they just kind of help me think things through. You know, I've got an idea, and and they're like like a compass, literally. They they we take an idea and they say and they love it, and they say and they've got these uh, an instinct, you know that. I have three older brothers, so I'm the youngest of the four. And and they all have this instinct where they just know, hey, absolutely, we love it, we got you. Uh, maybe tweak it that direction. And and so they help to unlock these these ideas. And man, we, we still work together every day. It's it's a blessing. Um, you know, it's it's unbelievable. And so we... It's we, a really cool story. And I, I got choked up when I was talking to you yesterday because you turned in front of your whole team and you said, this is the first guy that believed in me <laughs> or right. believed in this idea. What, a, what an absolute privilege uh, to sure. be in the room, to notice the enthusiasm, mm -hmm. the earnestness, the passion that you had for this idea to not just blow it off, to just encourage you, to hook you up with the right guy and mm -hmm. Jay Fifield. I mean, he's the right guy mm -hmm. to go through this process with you. I mean, what an absolute privilege for us to be involved in it. And what a great opportunity for Bovida to be a part of, I mean, you guys are rock solid group of people, the, the family. Um, for us to be involved, for us to be able to share our story and share the freshness journey with that vehicle going out from five states to 25 states with eight, eight pending, that, that's wonderful. I mean, it's a great privilege for us. I appreciate it. And then it. we're standing there yesterday and you point this out. And I'm like, well, wait, wait, a, I'd never heard about this. <laughs> Right? Wh yeah. When did you guys dream this up? So, I've had this idea for, for, for a couple years. And uh, I'm not a, you know, I, I like to stick to what I know and stick to my business. Well, there's plenty. And, you got to really focus to do that, yeah, to yeah. do the, 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 the remote located full-size humidors. I mean. Yeah. Um, but, you, you know, the conversations me and Jay have, every time, it's... And I always share this with them. I, I, like, I like simple. I like 
uh, the, 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 the simple fixes of life I like easy and um, what, what, uh, what me and him the ideas we kind of bounce around and the discussions we have where I, I constantly say is especially in the early stage of a guy's journey with cigars is we, we, we gotta guide them and the, guide them always the best way we can and it started with the Boveda small bags and the, and the medium sized bags where it's uh, just they buy it once try it once and you realize it works and this is the right way to keep your cigars fresh that's it it's just a, such a simple easy solution that is, is can be more complex than it should right and so for us and our, and our partnership is like how do we remind guys how do we remind the people um and how do we encourage them is is just don't don't discourage yourself and don't hassle try boveda stick your cigars in this bag it works and then and then it's for a gift for example you want to gift someone some cigars and i and i always share this with jay it's like there's I do it myself. I'm going to someone's party or you know gathering, and I want to take some some cigars as a gift to them. But there's nothing better. You stick it in a Boveda bag, and now you give it to him. It's like he doesn't have to worry, and he knows it's fresh. He doesn't have gonna, to have a humidor. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it just that added uh, relief, that added just you feel great about it. And so this is this is my kind of perception, and and why I value Boveda so much. And so, um, this product was a uh, the birth of this was kind of like now now that we have the the humidors growing, the locations growing, and we have the the restocks uh, all pretty much automated. They scan a QR code, it takes them to a portal, and they, it's an easy easy purchasing easy shipping ship you know same day we pack and ship all the orders and it's going nationwide so now that the products are in the in the hands of the retailers and they've got an audience now our focus is turning continue to turn towards the end consumer and what we've learned is a, a big majority of our end consumers that are picking up the cigars from these retailers are, are very new to the industry very just starting their relationship but are now buying them more often and are ready to start taking them home and what I wanted to do is have them be able to store a good amount of cigars at home without the hassle it's just a it's it's uh, a protected humidor that's just as simple as it can get and it's affordable. You're, you're, you're brand new to cigars, you're not ready to dish out a few hundred dollars for a humidor, right. and then you have to season it, and you gotta learn, and then, and then you know, cigars dry out. And, and so we, we, we wanted that solution. So I had uh, this concept, I shared it with Jay. I said, Jay, I'm doing this, and, uh, and I want you with us. And showed him the, you know, what my design looked like, where Boveda stood and uh, no hesitation is like we're in and it's like you know how how cool is that you know how how awesome is that and so I got to work and this was three months ago you know and so from from the concept the idea the prototype and, and constantly sharing this is the tweaks that we made and with a goal of showcasing it here in time so we got the samples in just in time. The, the, the first order arrives mid-August, ready to ship to, to, the, to retailers and to the public. But um, it's, 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 it's fun and it's... Uh, yeah, and it's self-explanatory. It's an 80-stick humidor in a closed cell. Uh, what would you call this material? It's EPP, uh, expanded polypropylene. So the, the demonstration that you're associate made over there standing on it was brilliant because he stood on this to show how uh, durable it is 
And then, uh, of course, inside there's a, a, in addition to a divider, there's a space for a bovida pack, and it includes a bovida pack. I didn't know about this. Sean and Tim didn't know about this. Nobody knew about this until yesterday. Mm -hmm. Brought it back. Everybody's ooing and eyeing over it. And then today, one of the one of the beautiful things that happened, and I'm so glad this went down. This it made my, it just warmed my heart to watch Manolo Quesada, one of the finest cigar manufacturers in the world. The guy's mm -hmm. been making cigars for 50 years, and his daughter Raquel, they were here. And that we, we, he noticed this. It was sitting on the counter. He noticed it, and he says, "What's that?" And I showed it to him, and he goes, "I have to, I have to go get one of these. I need this for my." Uh, he travels to from uh, back and forth in, from Spain. And he goes, "I need, to, I need, to, I need this." And I said, "Well, Manolo, I'll give you this." And I, I tell you what would be fantastic. I got to tell you the story of this, and I call you a kid. You're not a kid. You're you're a middle-aged man. I hate to break it to you, <laughs> but yes. I, I said you need to meet this guy, and he said, "Well, I'll go over there." And I said, "Hold on." I said, we sent Mike. Mike came and got you. You came over. You're very gracious. Gracious means gracious. I mean, this is this is a beautiful thing. I told Manolo the the story of you. I said the reason why this worked was because this kid's earnest and he does what he says he's going to do and he's he's decent and he's he's consistent that's you that's who you are and you, you I don't know who you get to blame for that mom dad whoever but that's a beautiful thing and he lit up on this and when he was so touched mm -hmm. when he had a chance to meet the inventor and talk to you and he's got one of these the guy Yep. I mean, it's a it's one of the greats in the cigar industry, and you've got brands talking about you, and that big yellow display over there. And I said something to you yesterday, and I got choked up thinking about it because my old man, amazing human being, um, he had a habit of saying to guys that he hardly knew. So tell me about your faith formation. This is my dad, old school Catholic guy that would say, "Hey, tell me about you know daily mass guy." And he'd ask people that, and he'd just cringe. You're like, oh my God, Dad, don't embarrass us <laughs> saying this. I don't know if you can imagine that. I know you come from the same tradition. But he had a hard time saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. Right? But he could say, hey, Drew, I'm proud of you. You know, something I did in school, something I did in sports, whatever. D Drew, I'm proud of you. That was his, that was his way of saying uh -huh. it, right? And I felt that yesterday. I'm standing over there and I'm like, Ramon, I know that this sounds whack, but I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for that, that idea that you saw through, the ability to plan it, manifest it, fabricate it, get it out into the marketplace. That's awesome. And, the, and this, I mean, it is an absolute privilege to be included as part of your story about your business that you're building and the, the way this has gone for you. It's an absolute privilege, and I, I can't thank you enough for that. No, man, I, I, I thank you, man. I, I you know, I, I really, really appreciate that. That's, but uh, believe it or not, it meant a lot when, you know, the, the, enc the, cur the encouragement. So, man, you know, I met, I met this guy at Bovera, and, and he believes in this idea, and so that's fuel especially you know like i said in those beginning days it was very lonely and so when you got that kind of encouragement that fuel and it really really gets you uh, going in that direction well uh, uh, appreciate you what else is there to say thank you yeah. god bless you do god well bless you.